There are so many things that make up a good Zelda game. It's got to have an epic story, a huge map to explore, tons of terrifying enemies, and that master sword by your side. And right next to that sword is about a dozen items that no regular human could carry. But Link is no ordinary person, and those gadgets are integral to his adventure. So what makes a good item in a Zelda game? For me, there are a few qualifiers. Does it have multiple functions? Does it serve its main purpose well? Can you use it to speed run? And most importantly, is it fun? There are hundreds of different items to choose from, and a lot of them may be more optimal than what I have here. So, this is my usual reminder that everything I say is my opinion and not fact. If there's a different Zelda item that you love, share in the comments down below. And welcome to my video for my top 10 favorite Zelda items. Number 10! When you have to complete as many games as I do, you want to get them done fast. I don't have time to wander at a regular pace. I've got to move quickly. Fortunately, Majora's Mask has the perfect item for this, the Bunny Hood. Originally introduced in Ocarina of Time, the Bunny Hood reached its full potential in Majora's Mask. Instead of just being a quest item and warding off enemies, it now increases your movement speed and lets you jump higher than ever before. It became invaluable for getting everything you need to get done in that three-day time span. Now, the Pegasus boots from Link to the Past may be similar in terms of speeding things up, but the access to charge is nothing compared to the control you get from the bunny hood. Plus, you don't look nearly as stylish. Number 9 2D Zelda games are much more basic than their 3D counterparts. You still wander around a vast land and use items to solve puzzles, but you're much more limited in your maneuverability. However, this all changed in Link's Awakening with the addition of the Rock's Feather. The Rock's Feather gave Link the ability to jump. That's it. But this was a monumental shift for the series. Before this, you could only jump off cliffs in spots where there wasn't anything blocking your way. If there were holes in the ground, you just had to go around them or ignore them. Now, you can get past these bad boys no problem. Plus, it was just fun to jump around constantly. The Rock's Feather would go on to appear in Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, and even Four Swords Adventure, where it could be upgraded to an even greater effect. But I'll never forget how excited I got when I first encountered it back on the original Game Boy, let alone in the most recent redux of Link's Awakening for the Switch. Number eight. The bow has been featured in almost every single Zelda game, making it almost as iconic as the Master Sword. But a bow is nothing without its most important tool, the arrow. And when it comes to my favorite type of arrow, it's gotta be the bomb arrow. What can I say? I'm a simple man. I like to make things go boom. My favorite iteration of the bomb arrow is definitely in the most recent Breath of the Wild. It feels infinitely more useful because of the open world mechanics and the additional effect of setting everything and everyone in its blast radius on fire. I've cleared so many camps of Bokoblins with a single bomb arrow. Breath of the Wild's bomb arrow is easily the most destructive arrow in the series. It has all the strengths of the bombs and arrows with none of the weaknesses. Number seven. Since the beginning, Zelda games have been filled with various gauntlets, gloves, bracelets, and mitts that are necessary if you want to move something big, something heavy, that's always standing in your way. My favorite one of these has got to be the Golden Gauntlets because they're not just gloves, they're a milestone. Ocarina of Time does an excellent job of improving your items as you play, such as going from the Kokiri Sword to the Master Sword, and gauntlets are no different. You start off with the Goron's Bracelet, which lets you pick up bomb flowers, then move on to the silver gauntlets once you're an adult that lets you push specific boulders and you're getting stronger and stronger a little bit over time. By the time you get the golden gauntlets, you are in Ganon's castle near the end of the game. They allow you to lift these heavy stone blocks that are blocking your path to defeating Ganon and reaching the end of the game. The golden gauntlets don't just make Link stronger, they show you how much you've grown over the journey of the game. Link has gone on from a little kid living with a Kokiri to a man that is going to take on the greatest evil Hyrule has ever known. And all of that is symbolized by these golden awesome gloves. Number six. Every 
Every time I've looked at Link with all of his weapons and gadgets, I've always thought he was missing one thing. A giant Beyblade that he can ride like a skateboard. Okay, I never actually thought of that one, but I didn't know how much I needed it until I unlocked the spinner in Twilight Princess. Easily the most ridiculous item in Link's arsenal, the spinner is also one of the most fun. Riding the spinner allows Link to travel across dangerous terrain like quicksand, as well as activating mechanisms in different temples because it's essentially a rideable gear. So it's an item that is just as useful as it is silly. But the spinner isn't just regulated to Twilight Princess. It's also a weapon in my favorite game, Hyrule Warriors, that is perfect for taking out large groups of enemies and never loses momentum, which makes no sense. You think Monster Flesh would get stuck in all those gears and whatnot. The spinner is a great item that shows that Zelda games aren't afraid to get a little bit weird, even if it's in its most serious game in the series. Now we just need to see Link ride one of those in the Tony Hawk game and give the Birdman a run for his money. Number five. Something that has become important in Link's 3D adventures is the ability to float through the air to cover great distances. Now, there have been many different versions of this type of tool, like the rock's cape, sailcloth, or even a freaking chicken, none compared to the utility of Wind Waker's Deku Leaf. The Deku Leaf is without a doubt the most effective glider in the series. Yes, even more useful than the paraglider from Breath of the Wild. With the Deku Leaf, you can ride air currents, soar over everything, and discover secrets by gliding from the highest heights. When separate the Deku Leaf from the likes of the Paraglider is that it works as a weapon as well. The Deku Leaf can be flapped to send large gusts of wind to disorient enemies or solve puzzles. That's pretty cool. Let's see the Paraglider do that. There's also something incredibly charming about using a leaf instead of something constructed by human hands. It is the best way to travel in Wind Waker. Okay, except for the boat. The King of Red Lions is really dope, you guys. Number four. Musical instruments have become a staple in the Legend of Zelda series, with its most iconic being the ocarina. It is the central item in Ocarina of Time, and it is integral to beating Majora's Mask. It also integrated music into the series, which has become a staple. But that's not my favorite one, to be honest, even though it looks the exact same. No, my favorite Zelda instrument is the flute, quote unquote flute, from A Link to the Past. The flute is earned by digging it up in the haunted forest of the light world and bringing it back to its owner, a young boy who's been turned into a tapir. After the soothing sounds of his flute turn him into a tree, you then play his flute at the weathercock statue in Kakuriko Village. A duck then bursts from the statue and will transport you to various places across the light world. Yes, this flute does fast travel. This may seem minor compared to other items in the list, but it is a godsend when it comes to getting around. What would you rather do, walk from the Eastern Palace to the Swamp Ruins or just have a duck take you there? Plus, the journey is much more satisfying than just, here's your instrument, enjoy. You have to earn that flute by going through a sad story where an innocent boy gets turned into a tree. Don't worry, he does get reunited with his dad in the end, but still, you are a horrible person for a little bit. Number three. All right, this one is kind of cheaty slash kind of different. The Zelda series is filled with different items, and when you get them, that's usually it. That kind of changed in Skyward Sword with the addition of an upgrade system. So with that in mind, I actually prefer the upgrade system in A Link Between Worlds, specifically the one executed by Mother Maya Maya. Mother Maya Maya is a giant Maya Maya that lost all 100 of her babies, and she wants you to bring them back to her. Every 10 kids, she will upgrade one of the items you've purchased from Ravio, turning something like the boomerang into the nice boomerang. Now, this not only makes the item stronger, but often gives them a greater effect. For example, the sand rod becomes the nice sand rod, and the sand pillars it creates don't have a time limit anymore. Now it becomes so much easier to explore all of high and low rule. Now, I like this upgrade system not just because it makes the different items so much better, but because it feels like you're doing something to deserve it. You're not just grabbing random items to make a stronger sword. You're returning a bunch of children to their mother and bringing back the babies and getting nice items in return feels, well, well, it feels, it feels nice. It feels nice to do good things for people. Come on. Number two. If you want to look at how the Legend of Zelda series has evolved over the years, look at the hook shot. In 2D Zelda games, it would lock onto an object and pull Link towards it in one of four simple cardinal directions. Simple, but a great way to get over gaps. Then 3D Zelda games came along and the hook shot became even more useful and important, being able to send Link into essentially any direction. Suddenly, anything felt possible. 
And then Twilight Princess came along and asked, hey, why not two? Thus, the double claw shot was born and things changed forever. With the double claw shot, you can launch yourself into any direction just like with the hook shot. But now you can hang on a single spot and head into another direction. The possibilities were officially endless. It's made even more fun with the Wiimote where you actually have to point and aim where you're going. This was emphasized more in Skyward Sword since you start out with the double claw shot instead of working your way up to it. The double claw shot takes one of the most beloved items in the franchise and makes it even better. But even then, there is still one item that I love more than the rest. Number one. You think that to excel on this list, an item would need to be a balance of the criteria I mentioned in the beginning. But for me, one is clearly more important than the others. Fun is the item I'm using fun. And for me, there's nothing more fun in all of Zelda than the ball and chain from Twilight Princess. This ball and chain is exactly what it sounds like, a big metal ball attached to a chain. And much like the medieval flail it's inspired by, you use it to smash things. When you swing that ball and chain, pretty much any enemy in front of you will be dead in a couple of seconds. Believe it or not, the ball and chain also has other functions too, like working as a shield or weighing you down to stand against strong winds. But I don't care about that. I just want to smash things. And the ball and chain is even more effective at that in Hyrule Warriors, where you can kill hundreds of enemies with no issue. And when it's fully upgraded in the best way possible, it becomes a chain chomp. Tell me that's not awesome. Now I get it. There are plenty of other items out there that are way more useful or can be utilized in a variety of ways. But when it really comes down to it, I'm just a brute who likes to smash things. Always have been. And there's no better gadget to kill a guy with than with the ball and chain. So those are my top 10 items from Zelda. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys. And if you like this video, do me a favor, press the like button, maybe subscribe, leave a comment and watch another one of my videos. Cause the more you watch, the, the better YouTube likes me. And we want YouTube to like me. I like me and I think you like me. So maybe YouTube will like me. Thanks for watching. Bye.